You may be seated uh, this evening. It's a blessing, and I just want to thank God for the privilege and thank my mom and my dad. I got two awesome parents. I know you all love them and spoil them. But tell me how much you spoil them over here. You keep on spoiling them and, and blessing them, and I am just so blessed when I'm here. And I see all these young adults hopping out over here, and, and then to see people that have been here for a really long time still going forward for the Lord. That just blesses my heart. I'm always praying for my mom and dad that God would just continue to prosper them and bless them. Because they've been here since 1991 here. Just laboring for the Lord. And, and uh, God has been so faithful. Um, so faithful. And I thank God for Pastor Tim and Sister Man. Such a blessing to my life. Um, my wife came from the Madera Church. So I'm so grateful for the Madera Church. That one awesome church. And uh, also, I'm so grateful to see Pastor Hector and my Sandy Church here as well. And uh, great, great worship. How do you appreciate the worship tonight? It was really good. And uh, always a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. Always a blessing to see God's people. And your church looks really, really nice. Looks like you guys are already ready for July. You just need more chairs. And But I know you have those chairs ready to go. But you're ready for July. You're ready for May. And the Lord is going to really bless this church during that time. So get ready. It's going to be awesome what God does um, these upcoming months here in Fresno. Um, so today, I'm just I'm just encouraged to be here. And how many of you love Jesus today? How many of you love him? You, you really love him. You're not here for a girl. You're not here for a guy. You're here because you love Jesus. Amen. You're here because you love Jesus. And I want you to turn with me to the book of 1 Samuel, um, chapter 13, and we're going to go to verse 14, and when you get there, you say amen. I have, a, I have a joke right now. You guys like jokes? Okay, I got a joke. Um, I heard, uh, you guys know what they call a Christian who has their Bible on their phone, and you might say, well, what do they call a Christian who has their Bible on their phone and doesn't bring the Bible to church? Do you call them a phony Christian? <laughs> when I heard that, I said to myself, I'm going to get all my Bibles. I'm going to get my Bible. I'm going to start praying into church. Some of you are the boat. Some of you want to stone me. It's okay. Brother Alfred's going to escort me outside after church. You have to mess with Brother Alfred. He's an awesome usher. You don't want to mess with Brother Alfred and Brother Joseph. And these guys, they know, they know how to fight. They know how to fight for the Lord. Amen. And they know how to fight too. Praise the Lord. Now, I... I I want to preach a message entitled tonight, A Heart After God's Heart. A Heart After God's Heart. And um, I want to share a, a brief story real quick. Um, years ago, I heard this story about this man who would always go up to the mountains and drink water from the stream up there, a river that was there, and he would go drink it. And one day he was up there camping and he went to go drink from the stream. And all of a sudden, he heard someone say, Stop, do not drink the water, do not drink the water from the stream. Don't drink it. And he was a park ranger. He turned to the park ranger and said, it's contaminated. And come to find out that way up there in the spring of the mountain, on the top of the mountain, right around there, there was a dead raccoon there in the water. There was a dead raccoon in that water. And what it did was it contaminated that spring. And all of a sudden what happened was they had to take that, that raccoon out there. They had to let that water run. And all of a sudden, for a while, then that, that spring was clean again. And today I want to preach about the spring of our hearts. That our heart is a spring. And tonight, I believe some of us, we've been contaminated by certain things in our life. And everything that we do, is good. there's just a, bitter, there's a bitterness there in that spring. There, there's something, there's a blockage there in that spring. And today I believe that God wants to bring, He wants to bring healing. He wants to, he wants to filter out that spring. And he wants to make it healthy again. And what the spring I'm talking about tonight is the spring of our hearts. The spring of our heart. And I want to look at two different men and two heart, two hearts tonight. And I want to look at the heart of King Saul. And I want to look at the heart of King David. Now, if you study the Old Testament and the book of 1 Samuel, you see that Samuel in chapter 10, God gave him a new heart. Everyone say God gave him a new heart. So when God gave him a new heart, how many know when we give our lives to Jesus, God gives us a new heart? He gives us a new heart. We're born again. We're, we're transformed. But the Bible says that we must guard our heart. 
So now you see that Saul, all of a sudden, God gave him a new heart. But in chapter 13, verse 14, look what the Bible says in this text. The Bible says these words, it says, But now your reign will not endure. The Lord has found a man after his own heart, and the Lord has appointed him as ruler over his people, because you have not done what the Lord has commanded. While we go and pray this evening, Lord, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your goodness. Holy Spirit, I, I depend on you. God, I depend on you, Father. We depend on you, Jesus. And tonight, Lord, I pray that you bring heart transplants to our lives, to my heart, to the hearts of your people here. That you would touch lives today. That chains of the enemy will be broken by your power, by your anointing. I pray for an anointing upon this message, Lord. That you would, Lord, tear down walls, God. That you would transform marriages. You would transform uh, leaders, Lord, young adults. Those who have been saved for many years. I pray for you to transform our lives, Lord. Lord, and I pray right now that I thank you, Lord, that Satan is defeated. Thank you that every lie of the enemy is broken by the power of Jesus. And we pray for revival in the city of Fresno, God. We pray for a mighty move that you tear down the walls and principalities of the enemy, Lord, of darkness, Lord, and you would bring a mighty revival to this church and to the churches here in Fresno, God. We thank you for all the great things you're doing. We thank you, Lord, that you are King of kings and Lord of lords, and we give you all the honor, and we give you all the glory, and we give you all the praise, and all of God's people said, amen and amen. You know, what is God looking for tonight? You say, what is God looking for? Have you ever asked yourself that question? What is God looking for? Have you ever said, I want to know what God wants? Because we know what we want, right? We know, we know where we want to eat. We know what's on our heart for this weekend. We know where we want to go. We know what school we want to go to. We know what neighborhood we want to live in. But do we know what's on God's heart? What God desires? Even we know what people that we look up to, what they want. We know their desires. You, you know what your husband wants to eat. You know what's on his heart. You know what your wife loves. You know what's on her heart. But have you ever asked yourself the question, what's on God's heart? What is on God's heart? And what's on God's heart is that God's heart is looking for people who have a heart for him. God's heart is looking for people who have a heart for him. Now I want you to jump with me to the book of Acts, chapter 13. And we're going to go to verse 22. And when you get there, say amen. Book of Acts, chapter 13, and verse 22. And Paul, he's preaching. And he's, uh, he says his words in verse 22. He says, after removing him, he's talking about King Saul. He raised up David as your king and testified about him. I have found David, the son of Jesse, to be a man after my own heart, who will carry out all my will. I have found David, son of Jesse, to be a man after my own heart, who will carry out all my will. Isn't that amazing tonight when you read that? Can you imagine God saying that about you when you think about that? I have found Brother Gino as a man after my own heart who will carry out my will. I have found Brother Patrick, Brother Patrick Romina, a man after my own heart who will carry out all my will. I have found Sister Angie as a woman after my own heart who will carry out my will. Wouldn't, isn't that the greatest compliment that any of us can think of? The greatest compliment is to be a person after the heart of God. Someone to have a desire to know the Lord Jesus Christ, to fully obey Him, to be close to Him, to have our heart set on the things of God. Because it's so easy to get our heart set on the things of the world. It's so easy to just get our heart set on our uh, material things. It's so easy to just get our heart set on uh, coveting what other people have. Like, oh man, if I had that job, and oh, if I had this, and if I had that. But let me tell you this, let's get our hearts tonight after God. 
Let's get a heart. Let's say, God, tonight, I need a heart transplant. I need you to be a great physician. How do we know that Jesus is a great physician? And his mission is to give us a new heart. And when you get that new heart, what do we got to do? We got to guard that heart with all of our all of our strength. Say, you know what, devil? You ain't going to take this heart that God's given me. This is a, a beautiful blessing because the reality is that we know we will be offended. People will talk bad about us. People will, if you invest in people and then they might backstab you. You know, you might have something happen to you at work that shouldn't have happened to you. And we have all these things that come our way. You might even have somebody come to church and they might even hurt you in church. But the reality is this tonight. We know that no matter what happens, God is sovereign. And he's still on the throne. And he already knows what we're going through before we even get to that destination. God knows tomorrow before tomorrow will be begun. God knew our whole life before the foundations of the world were even laid. God knew our life. God knew our second. God knew our moments. And today is the day that the Lord has made. Today is the day that we forgive. Today is the day that we love. Today is the day that we go forward for Jesus. Today is the day that we say, God, I repent. I want to turn to you. Give me a new heart. What's the greatest compliment you've ever received in your life? Let me tell you this, the greatest compliment any of us can receive today is that we're a person after God's heart. Young person, are you a person after God's heart? I don't care how old you are, to be a person after God's heart is something we've all been called to do. No matter our age, to be a man like David, a man who is after God's own heart. Now, jump with me in the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, and when you get to the book of Proverbs, say, I am there. Book of Proverbs, chapter 4. And whoever gets there first, they get a $20 McDonald's gift card. Um, I, Pastor Hector, I'm sorry, but I was there. But, it's Pastor Hector. I'm sorry, Pastor Hector. Pastor Hector. I'm there, Pastor Hector. I'm right there, chapter 4. <laughs> I'll send you the gift card, Pastor Hector. <laughs> I'll send it to you, Pastor Hector, because you were there. Fair and square, right? This is a holy place. I cannot lie behind this pulpit. Amen. I got you, Pastor Hector. It'll be there in a week. A week. Amen. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, it says these words. Guard your heart. Everyone say, guard your heart. I want you to let this over your heart. Guard your heart. Who's coming at this? Who's coming at our heart right now? We got the devil. We got the devil. He's shooting for our heart. Fiery darts. Fiery darts are coming our way every single day. We got the devil coming towards our heart. He's sending. He has, a, he has so many pornography. Impurity, bitterness, all these things are coming towards our heart. Coming towards our heart. Trying to control our heart. We got the devil on the prowl. Trying to destroy our heart. Trying to bring offenses. Trying to bring mind trips our way. To discourage us from going forward. Saying, what's the use? Why do I want to serve the Lord? All those Christians are all the same. They're all they're all, they're all gonna just backstab me. Oh, what's what's the use of even fighting for my marriage? My wife doesn't want to change, my husband doesn't want to change. They always act one way in church, but another way at home. Well, what's the use of even believing God? What's the use of even going forward for for my prodigal son or my prodigal daughter? What's even the use? So we have the devil in our ear. Sending fire darts our way. And then we got the world. We go, we have to go into the world. We have to go to work. And I would know that work sometimes is not the most holy place. It's not the most holy place. There, there, there's certain things that take place, and that's why when we go to work, we want to be anointed with prayer. We want we want to be ready for the battle that comes our way, right? So we got the world, we got the devil. Right? And then you've got the flesh. Sometimes our worst enemy is the person we look at in the mirror. Because it wants to be carnal. It wants to eat 
carne asada all the time and not fast and not pray, not come to church. The flesh, let's be honest tonight, you know what? You didn't want to come tonight, so you. you wanted to stay home tonight. You're like, man, I don't want to come home with my Savior. Man, why did Pastor Daddy invite us? Man, I didn't want to come all the way from Herndon in 99. I didn't want to come all, I didn't want to come all the way from uh, Kerman. So you have the devil. You have, you have our, we have our flesh and we have the world that's trying to just destroy this heart. And what does God say? He says, guard your heart. Guard it. Guard it. Above all else. Everyone say, above all else. Guard your heart. For in everything you do, flows from it. So we'll try that one more time, okay? So we're going to let this side say, above all else, guard your heart. And then this side, here's going to say, for everything you do, flows from it. Okay, on the count of three, we're going to start with this side. One, two, three. Above all else, guard your heart. One more time. Above all else, guard your heart. Now this side, for everything you do, flows from it. For everything you do, flows from it. Everything we do, flows from the heart. Flows from the heart. That this is the center of where every decision is made, where everything is contemplated, where everything comes to fru to fruition. This is what this is what the word before we even say that they're already here. And that's why Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So you can know what's going on in a person's heart. Just by hearing what they're saying. Yeah. Hearing what they're saying. And, and, and you know if there is a contaminated spring just by the words. Just by the words. How many know God wants to give us a tongue transplant tonight? God wants to give you a lengua transplant. Because out of the heart, there's this heart transplant. But God, well, God's in the heart transplant. Say, Lord, give me a tongue transplant. Because I want to be in, I want to speak words, Lord, that are in line with your word. I don't want to cuss no more. I don't want to curse no more, Lord. Lord, I don't want to gossip no more. I, I don't want, I don't want to slander no more. I don't want to slander someone no more. Can, can we be real today? We, we, we spiritualize slander. Oh, this is something we need to pray for. This is something we need to fast for. And then you slander and God says, you know what? I want to further my kingdom. And furthering his kingdom, guess what? It comes by speaking the truth in love and going forward. Man, I feel like I should have heard right now. Holy Spirit, help me, Jesus. Can we be real? Have I ever said, oh, yes. My tongue wants to gossip. My tongue, the flesh, was created to gossip. My flesh, it, it, it relishes in gossip. It's like, oh, what, 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 what else? Tell me more, tell me more, tell me more. What else happened? And that's where the flesh works, right? That's where the flesh works. And the flesh wants to slander, it wants to criticize, it wants to demoralize. But God says, I want to give you a new heart. And the Bible says in the book of Ephesians that God, he wants us to speak the truth in love. But he says, I want your, your, your words to be seasoned with salt. It doesn't matter what we say, but the Bible talks about a gentle answer. A gentle answer can break the bone. You could do more damage to the kingdom of darkness with a gentle answer, full of the Holy Spirit. Then we could do yelling and just coming and saying things we shouldn't be saying. Uh, and sometimes, what does the Lord tell us, especially those of us who are married? Don't say nothing. Just pray in your mind. Pray, oh Jesus, touch my wife's heart. Touch my wife's heart. This morning, me and my wife, we were, we were uh, leaving a uh, morning prayer there in uh, our the church there, and we were leaving, and we were getting ready to come over here, and me and her, how do we know that all marriages argue? And we, 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 we are, um, we started, and it was practically about to explode. And I said, this is a loaded conversation. 
let's just, you know, let this could go, this could go bad real fast. Because our words. And you know what could happen? The devil could have an argument right before coming over here. And we don't even want to come over here. I don't even want to go preach. I argued with you. <laughs> I don't even want to go go with a minister at my dad's church. I argued with my wife after prayer. The devil was strategizing right after morning prayer. Some of you got an argument on your way to church today. Because because the devil is trying to come at your heart. He knows the times to attack. Right before church. Right after you came to the altar. You're going back and the devil just attacks. And what happens? You think, man, God's not going to do the work in my heart. But God's doing the work in our heart. But you just got to guard it. You just got to guard it. I want you to just guard it. God's doing the work. He's doing a good work, but you got to guard it. See, some of us, we know how to guard our house. You have all those guns. You're ready for an intruder to come in. You're ready. You're all oh, going to do this. I got my camera. I got my ring. I got my gun. I got my knife. I got my bat. I got my broom. <laughs> if some of you get that with your heart, oh man, where you would be? Where you would be? When I'm talking about the heart, the heart, I'm talking about guarding that the heart represents our thoughts, our meditation, our contemplation. That's what the heart that. That's where everything flows from. The, the, the Jewish people believe it flows from right here. This area here is your heart. This is where your emotions are, the seat of your will, the seat of your, your heart. This is where your thoughts flow from. Flow from this place. Where do you get where do you get anger? Where do you get bitter? The heart. The heart. And God wants to give us transformation. So today, uh, first point is spiritually clogged arteries. Charles Spurgeon, he wrote, he said, some of your hearts are not worth keeping. The sooner you get rid of them, the better. They are hearts of stone. Do you feel today that you have a stony heart? Go home and pray to the Lord to hear your desire to get rid of that polluted heart. Pray that it's removed. Cry to God and say, take my heart of stone. And give me a heart of flesh. A stony heart is an impure heart. It's a divided heart. It's a heart that doesn't have peace. It's a heart that's void of goodness. It can either bless thyself or others. What is this stony heart that he's talking about? A proud heart is one of the descriptions that we see from Saul. That the Bible says that Saul started out humble. But then all of a sudden he began to get proud and arrogant. Book of 1 Samuel, chapter 16, verse 22. Uh, we see that he was no longer coming to God with a pure heart, but he had a proud heart. A proud heart. Setting up monuments for himself. Just being very self seeking was his heart. Another thing is a stubborn heart. Being stubborn. We don't want to be stubborn with the Holy Spirit. We don't want to be stubborn with God. We don't want to say, God, I, I don't want to change. I'm not going to change God. But we have to have a, 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 a soft heart, not a stubborn heart. To the things of God. God wants us to have a soft heart. The book of uh, Psalm chapter 81 verse 12 talks about that stubborn heart. Another thing that we see is that the heart is deceitful. The Bible says in Jeremiah 17 verse 9, the, the heart is deceitful. Who can know it? And then again in verse 10, something that sometimes we miss. We, we just look at verse 9. We don't look at verse 10. God says, I, the Lord, search the heart. I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what deeds they deserve. So imagine that. I, I believe that tonight, that tonight God's going to visit us in the night and He's going to search our heart. He's going to search our heart. They, they say that before we go to sleep, it's a good time just to come to the Lord and say, Lord, I repent of this. Lord, forgive me, Lord, for having that bad attitude today. Lord, oh, Lord. Let me not do that tomorrow. Because when we go to sleep without repenting, without coming clean before the Lord, we give the devil a foothold. Inside of our life, our heart becomes hard and stony. But God wants us to have that pure and soft heart. God searches our heart. Turn to your neighbor and say, God's going to search your heart tonight. God's going to search Danny's heart tonight. And, and you know what? 
The Bible, I, I want to tell you that everything of our heart is naked before the Lord. It's naked before the Lord. We can't hide it. We can deny it, but we can't hide it. And it's laid right before the Lord. He sees our anger. He sees our frustration. And we can be honest with him and say, God, I am angry. And I am frustrated. And this is why, Lord, help me to have a soft heart. And help me to forgive that person that offended me, Lord. Bring order to the situation. You know what? Can I say something? I'm going to say it, okay? Forgiveness is a lot easier than we think. But our heart has become so hard, we don't want to do it. We just have to say, God, give me a soft heart to forgive that person. Forgive them. Just to forgive them. That doesn't mean that they're right. That doesn't mean, just because you forgive them doesn't mean they're right. Because you forgive them doesn't mean that you're, you're wrong. Because you forgive them, it doesn't mean anything. That you know what forgiveness means? It means you're being obedient to God. That's what it means. All you have to tell me, you know what? Last year, um, there was a there was a person that I a couple of people I got it laid in my heart to ask for forgiveness from and, and to, to apologize to. And you know what? Um, all I did was I just went, you know what? Would you forgive me? And I told them why. Would you forgive me? I just apologize. And maybe someone that passed away, you, you in your bedroom, or even tonight at the altar, you need to say, you know what? I, for, I forgive them. There's a young man coming to our church, and, and he was in the Marines, and he, he had told me about his whole life, and, and, and just went through a lot of, a lot of hard things. And, um, uh, Few month, month, about two months ago, we were at the altar, and I, I just, I just felt led in my spirit to give him a word of knowledge. Uh, hey, God wants you to forgive. I didn't even know why I was going to say. I didn't know what it was going to do or anything that was going to happen. But that man began to weep and cry. He began to weep and cry, and, and he was just right there weeping on the altar. And God was really doing a work in his life. God was just touching him. But I, was, I received a text from him, I was reading it yesterday, and, and he was telling me that when that happened, that something changed in his life. Something changed in his life. You know he forgave him at this, this man was passed away that he forgave. He forgave him at the altar. See, tonight, God really wants to bring healing and, and transformation. You know what you can do tonight? You can do it at the altar. You can just say, Lord, I forgive them. I forgive them, Lord. Have your way. Do that mighty work. You might say, Pastor Daddy, you don't know what they've done. You don't know what they you know, you don't know what they're gonna say. You know what? It doesn't matter what they're gonna do or they're gonna say. What matters is that you and I are obedient to God. You might say, Man, that's really easy for you to say. You haven't had to forgive anybody. No, we all have to forgive people. Every single one of us does. And it's a test. It's I believe it's a test sometimes from God who will forgive those people. So flowing from the heart, um, you have to have a heart after God and you must be spirit filled. So, so, someone say um, tonight, someone said tonight um, that uh, if you're not full of the spirit, you're not full at all. That's the truth. Huh? Talent is good. Ability is good. But you can have somebody who's even, uh, maybe not the most greatest speaker, but if they're anointed, oh, get out of the way. Why? Because there's an anointing over their life. Why? Because God is faithful to his anointing. God is faithful. So how does that how does it come being spirit filled? Well, the Bible says in the book of Acts, why don't you to the book of Acts, chapter 8? And when you get there, say amen. Book of Acts, chapter 8. And right now I'm not going to do no gift cards for this one. I know Pastor Hector is going to get there. Pastor Hector is already are you there, Pastor Hector? Okay. Okay, so book of Acts chapter 8. Praise the Lord, I'm going to take in my bottles and cans this week so I can send it. And I'll do some later, guys. Book of Acts chapter 8. When you read the book of Acts, you get fired up to want to go preach. You want, you want to share the gospel with somebody, right? 
How many, how many when you read the book of Acts, you want to go pray for the sick? You want to go pray for, you want to go cast out some demons. So we're like, demons are real? No, demons are real. Demons are real. Demons are real. And when you read the book, you want to cast out demons. You want to say, oh, you want to pray for, you want to pray for people. When you read the book of Acts, you want to cast out that demon of pornography out of somebody. Yeah, that demon of lust. Come out in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. And it is what God can do through us. Vessels full of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says Philip was preaching. He was an evangelist. And then all of a sudden, uh, Peter and John, they come to the, the place in verse 14, chapter 8, verse 14. While the apostles were at Jerusalem, they heard of Samaria had received the word of the Lord. They sent Peter and John to them. After they went down there, they prayed for them so that the Samaritans might receive the Holy Spirit. Because he had not yet come down on any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Peter and John laid their hands on them, they received the Holy Spirit. Oh, thank you. How many remember that, that time where you got filled with the Holy Spirit? You got filled with the Holy Spirit. Tonight we're going to pray for that as well. That people will get filled with the Holy Spirit. I was thinking about the time my wife got filled with the Holy Spirit down way in a, a smaller church down on uh, right by Kings Canyon at a women's event. She got full of the Holy Spirit, baptism of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues. I got full of the Holy Spirit when I was eight years old to start speaking in tongues at 3 o'clock in the morning. Shut it up, I'm not it away, give it a camera. Oh, hallelujah. I heard people getting baptized coming up speaking in other tongues. Thank you. You got to move. Hallelujah. That religious spirit gets angry when you start talking about speaking in tongues. I, I heard other churches don't speak in tongues. I never knew that before. That's weird. This guy said, stop judging. Stop judging. Well, you know, <laughs> you know what? We need to speak in tongues. To find, just to, we need to speak in tongues. Yeah. And if you're here, you, you, you don't have to give, believe God, ask God. Say, God, give me that gift of speaking in other tongues, Lord. Give me that gift of speaking in other tongues, Lord. And um, we know Paul spoke, spoke in tongues more than anyone. Um, how many want to outdo Paul? Start speaking in tongues more than, more than him. It's not competition, you say, but hey, I want to be full of the Holy Spirit. I want to see signs and wonders. I want to see God do miracles. I want to see, I want to see revival in the youth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? We need, we need to break off that religious spirit and say, we don't got to pray to God no more. You know, it is, we don't have to seek the baptism of the Holy Spirit no more. No, we need a move of God in our lives. Yeah. And, when, you know, when we speak in tongues, we edify ourselves. The Spirit of God is edified within us. Yeah. Um. You might say, why am I such a dead Christian? Well, you might be a dead Christian because you're not witnessing. Yeah. And I'm preaching to myself today. You're, you, you, you're not witnessing. And you might even be someday, you might be at a restaurant and God might just say, just share my gospel right now. Yeah. And you might just go, excuse me, everyone here. Everyone here at Olive Garden. I want to let you know that Jesus loves all of you. And God has a great plan for your life. And I'm, I'm not a professional preacher, but I don't have to be. But I want to tell you that God loves you. With the, with the, and, 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 you know, that's awesome when you see a pastor do that. Because it's easy to preach behind a pulpit sometimes and we just get, but to see a pastor like do something like that in public, you're like, whoa, man, he's a really, 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 really ready. And that's what I love about our pastors, because our pastors, they're street preachers. Yeah. I see, I see my dad, they're going out, so she pastor Tim just preaching right there on the street. I'm like, damn. That's awesome. That's awesome. Outside of these four walls. See, I see uh, Pastor Danny is out there in the streets right there on the corner of Shaw, right there with the bullhorn preaching. That is, that's awesome. That's what we need more of. Tonight we're breaking that religious spirit that doesn't want to evangelize. That just wants to, just wants to be a professional Christian. Just wants to clock in and clock out. Just wants to come to church and then leave. And then go to work and act the same way like, the, like the, our co-workers. That's a religious spirit. See, when you have the spirit of God in you, you want to pray for people. You want to witness. You want, you, want to, you want to be in prayer. 
You want to be in prayer seeking the Lord? And, and I hear you guys pray here early in the morning. That's awesome. That's why there's such a great presence of the Lord here in this place. Why? Because you seek the Lord. You know one thing I've noticed about all churches that have revival? They all have morning prayer. That's one of the common threads you see in all revivals. From John Wesley to Smith Wigglesworth to Azusa Street Revival. They were praying and they were reading the Bible. William Seymour, before the revival broke loose over there on Azusa Street, he was reading the Bible for upwards to five or six hours a day. The Spirit of God came over and he began to speak in other tongues. God brought up such a great revival. He talks about in that revival that dignified ministers would come in with their fancy suits. They would come in with their nice sports coats. And they would go, well, what the heck is going on? And by that time they left, they were on their knees, humbled men before the Lord, crying out to God. Nations, African Americans, whites, Chinese, Mexicans, all coming together, no matter their age. There wasn't no delineation of older versus younger versus this race or that race. They were all one body in Christ. The name of the church wasn't lifted up, only the name of Jesus. And God brought a mighty, massive move in Los Angeles that touched the world. We're praying for that right now in Los Angeles where we're at in the city of Whittier. We're praying, Lord, bring a massive revival. We're going there at 5 a.m. to pray. Monday through Friday, Lord, bring a revival. Bring a revival. Bring a revival. Bring an outpouring of your spirit in this place. And we're seeing God do mighty things. We're seeing God do tremendous things. Why? Because something happens when we seek him with all of our heart. There has to be repentance. So, the Bible says that there was a man there who began to see the, the Spirit of God come on top of people, and his name was Simon, he saw the Spirit in verse 18, when Simon saw the Spirit was given through the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money, saying, give me this power also, so that anyone I lay hands on may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter told him, may your silver just be destroyed with you, because you thought you could obtain the gift of God with money. You have no part or share in this matter because your heart is not right before God. All of a sudden, God begins to give him discernment about what was going on in his heart. He goes, hey, your heart's not even right with God yet, man. You got that time, but your heart's not even where it needs to be. You're still, look what he says in the next verse. He says, therefore, repent of this wickedness of yours and pray to the Lord that if possible, your, heart intended may be, your heart's intent may be forgiven. For I see you're poisoned by bitterness and bound by wickedness. So his heart wasn't right before the Lord. Paul said, repent. And I believe that's, that's the call for all of us today. Let's repent. Let's say, God, I turn away. I turn away, Lord. I repent, God. I, I ask for your mercy. Lord, I'm going to trust in you with all of my heart, all of my soul, God. I'm going to be that person after your heart. Repent of that bitterness. Repent of that, that, that anger. Repent of that. Maybe you have a, maybe you have a wrong spirit with people. Maybe you, maybe you, you you're mean to people. Maybe you, you, you have a chip on your shoulder. Repent of that. Say, God, help me, God. Lord, help me, God. Oh, Jesus, cry out to him. You know what God does? He hears our cry. We can cry out with all of our heart. And he hears us, church. That's the good news, that he hears us in our darkest moment, in our, in our worst moment. We can cry out to him, Lord Jesus, I need you. I don't even know what to say. All I know, Lord, is you see my heart. Thank you, Ryan, before you. Okay? So having a heart after God, the second point is we must spend time alone with God. Spend time alone with God. See, David, when God had called him, we know that he was a shepherd boy. He was out um, in the field when God had called him. And he was out there for hours and days. And he was right there writing his songs. I believe it had his harp. And he was just stringing his harp. He was playing songs on his harp. He was worshiping the Lord at the midnight hour. In the morning, he was worshiping God, and nobody was out there. It was just him and the Lord. It was him and the Lord, seeking the Lord, praising, praying unto the Lord. And in, in, in this place, we see that God began to really mold him for the things that God had for him in his life. So God chose David as a teenager. God wants to use teenagers tonight. God chose him as a teenager, but you know what happened, church? God anointed him as king as a teenager, but he didn't see that take place for many years later. And God, what did he do? He just molded him and shaped him, made him that man that he had called him 
to be, but everything flows from our quiet time with God. Everything flows from morning prayer, seeking the Lord, praying before you go to sleep, walking around your house, and Lord, Rabbi Hashem, the Lord, the Lord, Lord, right now, behind the enemy, every strategy of Satan right now, I come against it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. There may be some nights where you feel the forces of darkness coming against you. What do you got to do? You got to go out there and wrestle against those lions and demons that are trying to bring deception and discouragement inside of our life. Have you ever woke up and you're all discouraged? Oh, I just feel like, oh, these weights are on me. That's why you got to wake up and pray. That's why you got to wake up and pray. That's why sometimes you got to fight in the night against the enemy. The enemy. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 62 verse 8, Trust in Him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before the Lord. God is a refuge to us. Say love, pause, think about that. Tonight, pour out your heart to Him. Pour it out. Because if you don't pour it out, it's going to be contained, it's going to be bottled up, and it's going to get, it's going to get just, just festering with all those emotions, all, all that hurt, but God says, pour it out to me. Pour out your heart to me. Trust in me. Trust in me. Pour it out before the Lord. Amen. The Bible says in Psalms 119 verse 2, it says, blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek them with all their heart. With all your heart, seek him. With all everything you have inside of you, seek the Lord. I, 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 tonight, I want to tell you, we need to seek the Lord with all of our heart. God, I, I, I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. And that's why Jesus said to love the Lord. It's the greatest commandment of all commandments. We, we have the Decalogue. We have the Ten Commandments. We have, then you have the, the 613 commandments there. Come behind those Ten Commandments. And we know that they tested Jesus. What's the greatest of all commandments, teacher? He said the greatest, the highest, is to love the Lord your God with all your heart. With all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And that's why God says in the book of Psalms 192, Blessed are those who keep his testimonies and seek them with all their heart. The Bible says in Psalms 119, verse 7. All these verses are Psalms 119. Okay, so the longest chapter in the Bible. Go to it tonight and don't let it put you to sleep. Stay there, okay? Psalms 119, verse 7. I will pray to you with an upright heart, Lord. With an upright heart. When I learn of your righteous judgments, verse 10, with all my heart, with all my heart I've sought you, do not let me stray from your commandments. With all my heart I've sought you. Verse 11, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Verse 32, I run in the path of your commandments, for you enlarge my heart. You enlarge my heart. Isn't that a beautiful verse? I think we overlook it sometimes. God wants to make our heart bigger. He wants to enlarge our territory. Enlarge, you know, you think about enlarging the, the Old Testament concept of enlarging your tents. That means that God's going to bring fruitfulness and abundance. God wants to bring fruit, fruitfulness and abundance to our hearts. He wants to make us fall in love with Him like never before. He wants us to be so consumed with Him like never before that nothing could even get us down. Why? Because we're so in love with Him. Have you ever, do you remember when you just barely fell in love with your spouse, with your wife, and bad things happened, but you were still happy because you knew you were getting married? You're like, oh, I don't even care. I'm getting married in 150 days. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Brother Anthony knows about this, right? He's like, three more days, two more days. I'm sure if he's positive, yeah, man, if he don't care, he goes, I'm getting married on Saturday. <laughs> if his boss is slap me, slap me, slap me, hit this cheek, hit that cheek. Because I'm getting married on Saturday. And when God enlarges our heart, we can go through some trials. That's a trial of like Jesus. You give it, you take it, but blessed be your name. Lord, you can take that away. You can take that away, Lord. But you, Lord, I still have a relationship with you. That's all that you my heart's desire. As a dear pendant after the spring soul, my soul desired the pendant after you, Lord.
Verse 36, turn my heart to your testimonies and not to covetous gain. Verse 70, their hearts are hard and callous, but I delight in your law. Verse 111, your testimonies are my heritage, for they are the joy of my heart. Tonight, as the worship team makes your way up here tonight, We talked about being full, full of the Spirit. We talked about spending time alone with the Lord. But to have our heart after God, we must also have a contrite, soft heart. Soft heart. The book of Isaiah, chapter 57. The Bible says in verse 14, he said, Build it up, build it up, prepare the way, remove every obstacle. Tonight, God wants to remove obstacles from our heart. Things that things that come in the way. For my people's way, for the high and exalted one who lives forever, whose name is holy, he says. I live in a high and holy place with the presence of the Holy Spirit to revive the spirit of the Lord. And to revive the heart of the oppressed. One of the things that we see is that God, He used David, He used Daniel, He used many men throughout the Bible, many women throughout the Bible. But they had a they had a, a, a soft heart, they had a humble heart before God. Tonight, having humility in our heart is something that we we all, we all need to strive for because have you ever been in that place where our heart wants to become proud and we could look at certain things in our life and we're like, man, we get that wrong heart, but to have a right heart. The Bible says in the book of 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 8, it says, finally all of you have a united mind. Having that soft heart before the Lord. Say, God, let me have a humble spirit before you, Lord. Let me have a humble heart before you. Being able to say, Lord, let my heart be soft, Lord. Let it be tender, Lord. Let it not be hardened by or callous, Lord, by the things of this world, by my pride, by my by my arrogance, Lord. But let it be soft before you, Jesus. How do we have that spirit? You know what? You just ask God, God, Lord, help me to have a humble spirit. How do you want to be soft? My heart to be soft before you, Jesus. How do you walk in that, that way that you call me to walk in, Lord? Because pride can really disrupt what God wants to do. Pride can contaminate what God wants to do inside of our life, inside of our marriages, the sign of our children. We're in that place where the hardness of, of a pride hinders what God is going to do in our life. We can get so consumed with how much money is in our bank account, our status, our prestige, with numbers, is our focus tonight merely inward? Is it always looking on how do I look? How do I look? What are people going to think about me? What are people going to think about me sharing sharing the gospel? Like, what are they going to think about me? I don't want to look like a, I don't want to look like a fool. That's pride. God says in His Word that He resists the proud, but He gives grace to the humble. So our eyes today, let's get them focused off of ourselves. And let's get them focused on Jesus. Let's say, Lord, I want to, I want to put my eyes on you, Lord. I want to be a person after your heart, not my own heart. I want your name glorified. I want your name uplifted in a mighty way. Tonight, if we could all stand in this place.